What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. Another week, another round of software updates and a bunch of Apple news. So as we do every weekend, we're going to discuss some more new features in iOS 16 beta 2, along with talking about the performance and the battery life. And after we talk about the software, we're going to discuss why the next generation HomePod is going to be much better than the original, bad news about the Apple Watch Series 8, why demand is already higher than usual for the iPhone 14, how Apple failed, and more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next weekend's episode. All right, so as usual, let's start off with even more iOS 16 beta 2 features and changes. So first up is visual lookup now works for insects. So if I go into my photos right here, and if I search for a bug, you can see here I have a spider. If I go ahead and swipe up, you can see we now have visual lookup and we get a new icon there for insects and it says look up the insect you will see the little icon on the bug right there as well if we go ahead and tap on that it will give us some results for what that insect is now we also have quite a few changes in the shortcuts application in ios 16 and the first thing i noticed is that shortcuts run much faster in ios 16 and specifically here on beta 2. so i'm going to go over to my shortcuts here i'm going to go to my view battery cycle and i'm going to do it on ios 15 here as well and by the way you'll see some differences here that i didn't mention in my original what's new video you could see on ios 15 it would show the amount of actions underneath of the name of the shortcuts. Now on iOS 16, you don't get that. So it looks a lot cleaner, not as cluttered. All right, so we're gonna run the Apple Frames shortcut right here and take a look at how much faster this shortcut runs on iOS 16 compared to iOS 15. And like I said, I did also notice a boost here in beta two, but take a look at this. Still waiting on iOS 15, still waiting, still waiting. So you can see a big difference in especially like at shortcuts with a lot of actions you will see a big difference like this one right here so literally it takes like half the amount of time if not even faster on ios 16. there we go finally and here's another one here's time machine if we go ahead and tap on that you can see it pulls up on ios 16 before it does on ios 15. not as big of a difference but there is still a difference also you'll notice up top the little ui here is much different as well i did not mean to save a screenshot right there but you can see up top there is a difference in the ui as well so we had the markup in the top right on ios 15. now on ios 16 it's down there in the bottom right and you can just see a lot of things are kind of moved around here in iOS 16. And then one last thing I just noticed is that if you press on something like Amazon price history, you will see on iOS 15, it would say text up there in the top left because that was the action. But now in iOS 16, it just shows the name of the shortcut instead of that specific action. So you can see there it says the name versus text over here on the left. You'll also notice that the background is not near as blurred as it was on iOS 15. There's a new dictation sound in iOS 16 beta 2. So if you tap on dictation, you will hear this is the new sound. Now, if you were typing out something and you wanted to find a specific word, you know, every single time it showed up in a document, normally you would go to the three dots right here and then go to find in note and search for whatever you want to search for. But there's another way to do that in iOS 16. So if you select that word right there and you scroll down a little bit to find selection, it will pull up that menu right there. That way you don't have to type it in when you go to the three dots right here and then go to find in note. So just a quicker way to do that. In the weather application, you will now get this new little pop-up that says tap for more detail see hourly weather for the next 10 days. So you will see that I got it when I changed cities. So it wasn't like I hadn't used the feature before. I just changed cities and it showed me that new pop-up. And then speaking of weather, we also have something new here. So you can actually see that live right here. I haven't even touched it. So you can see it's still there. But if you go to the day right here and you go to your precipitation, so if you go to rainfall, you will see that we now have different types of precipitation or rainfall down here. So we have rain, sleet, mixed precipitation, and snow. So now it will break it down if it's snowing somewhere. You know, if it's snowing at one part of the day and raining at another part, it will show that because it's color coordinated in the graph right there. So it just breaks it down for a much more precise you know, view of the weather. And if we head back into Safari and go to a shared tab group, you can see up in the top right, we now have little avatars for the people we are sharing that tab group with. Whereas before it just showed 
show that little blue icon right there. And if you tap on that, you will see a difference here as well. So it's just laid out a little bit better. We have some blue in there. And if we go to manage shared tab group, you can see the interface now takes up the entire screen. Whereas on beta one, it just was this little pop out. You could still see like that tab group in the background with everything kind of grayed out. But now it takes up the entire screen right here. It just looks a lot cleaner in beta two. You also have copy link now that was not there in beta one. And if you go to share options, you now have an adding people section right here. If we head into the home application, we have a nice little hidden feature here. So if you go ahead and haptic press on one of these icons right here and go to edit home view, it puts you in jiggle mode. But if you tap on it, you actually now have the option to reset size that specific element. So for instance, I can shrink this a little bit right there and I could do that for any of these. If I want to make this one bigger, I could just tap right there. If I want to make both of these big, I could do that. You can see right there, you could change between two different sizes for these little sections here in the home app, which is pretty cool. It gives it more of a, a custom look. You can kind of customize it to how you like. In the watch application, we have a few changes to the preview of the new watch faces. So for instance, you can see here for Lunar, it now shows a darker image than it did in beta one. Playtime, we have some different colors. We have some greens and some blues in there. For astronomy, you can see slightly different there as well. Portraits, we have a different image, a different girl there. And for modular, you can see the gradient is kind of flipped. And you can kind of see the differences better here under astronomy for the Earth and the Moon. You can see just a different preview image right there. And then one other thing I wanted to mention, and it's not related to iOS 16, but Apple did just launch their Apple Community Plus program, at least to the public. This was pretty under wraps beforehand. It was only for select members, but now this Apple Community Plus program basically gives you perks for engaging and posting helpful things on the official Apple forums. So it is by invitation only, as you can see right here. And the rewards aren't really mentioned. It just says that you get access to special perks, white glove experiences and more, but it's not very specific. But this is pretty interesting if you are active in the community and you like to help on those forums. Now, as far as bugs go, I don't like to spend too much time talking about the bugs because you guys know it's an early beta, they're expected. But I did wanna mention a few things. And the first one is that sometimes when you go into a sleep mode, if you go into your sleep focus mode right here, your notifications will become kind of opaque. So it's not happening right here. It is a bug, but sometimes they will be kind of faded and less opaque than they should be. And that is definitely a bug that is not intended because it doesn't happen every single time. But that is one thing I noticed when you go into a sleep mode. It happened to me like once in the past week. And then also if you were to delete a stock application like your weather, you would not be able to install it again here in beta two. So this is one thing that Apple mentioned in the release notes. And they said that the bypass to this or the workaround is to connect to Wi-Fi and try installing it. But quite a few people have said that once they remove like the weather application or the clock application, they're not able to reinstall it at all. And then I've already mentioned all the other previous bugs I've been facing here in beta two in last week's Apple Weekly episode. So none of those are any different here. I have still been facing most of those. And of course the Apple Music is one thing I have noticed has improved a lot since beta one. Apple Music would crash a lot in beta one. It's not as bad here in beta two. It still does crash every once in a while, but it's not near as bad. I know some people also have banking apps that are still crashing. Again, that is up to the developer of that application. A lot of them do work, but some of them will not. That is intended. You know, that's how it works pretty much every single year. People have issues with banking applications. So that's always one thing to keep in mind. But yeah, anyways, moving on to the performance and the battery life. Nothing has really changed since I talked about this last weekend. The performance, like I mentioned, is pretty good. I mean, there are crashes. That's not really something I would consider performance. That's more of like a bug but the overall performance is actually pretty good. I mean, I think it's much better than iOS 15 was at this stage, even iOS 14 or 13. I think this is one of the best I've seen in terms of overall performance really and battery life. And I mentioned this on Twitter as well. We were you know, kind of told that iOS 16 would be this buggy mess that would be released later than usual. Like the public beta would come later than usual, but it's really not been the case for me or most of you guys. It's been pretty good. So I really don't have too many complaints about the performance or the battery life here in iOS 16, at least on beta two. Beta one was a nightmare. Beta two, much, much better than beta one, both in terms of performance and battery life. All right, so now let's talk about what is next for Apple. So we are officially in in July. Where has 2022 gone? It's flying by. But anyways, we should be seeing iOS 16 developer beta three next week. So next week is a US holiday on Monday, the 4th of July. But I don't think that's going to stop 
Apple from releasing anything that whole week. So I do think next week is likely for iOS 16 developer beta 3. I'm leaning more towards the 6th instead of the 5th for some reason, but we should see it really any day next week. I would say from the 5th through the 7th is the most likely. Now we should also see the public beta come the following week. So Apple does usually wait about a week, sometimes a little less. It could come that same week, but it's usually a week after the developer beta. So we could see the public beta, the first public beta of iOS 16 on the week of the 11th. It could come right there on the 11th or it could come on the 12th or the 13th, but I would expect it that following week. And then as far as iOS 15.6 goes, we should see the RC build next week. I would assume we're going to see RC next just because we could see the new MacBook Air on the 15th. That is what rumors are saying. If that's the case, I do think we're going to see the RC next week and then the final 15.6 the following week on the 11th. But of course, I could be off by a week. It could be another beta next week, then the RC, then the final. We'll have to wait and see. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. All right, so first up, let's talk about upcoming Apple products. More specifically, products coming between the fall of this year and the first half of next year. And we're not going to mention the AR VR headset. Don't worry. We've talked about that every single week, you know, pretty much for the past couple months, but nothing is new this week. So we're not going to talk about that. Instead, let's talk about the upcoming Apple Watch SE and the Series 8. So according to German at Bloomberg, the Apple Watch SE is going to be getting the same chip as the flagship Apple Watch for the first time ever. Of course, the Apple Watch SE just came out, but we're going to see that same chipset as the flagship. He said this. So Apple is preparing three new variations of the Apple Watch, a new low end SE, a standard series eight and a rugged edition aimed at extreme sports. For those hoping for a faster chip in this year's Apple Watch, I'm told the Series 8 chip will have the same specifications as the Series 7. The SE will stick to the screen size of the current model, but it may get the same S8 chip as the flagship Series 8 watch, an upgrade from the S5 and the current SE from 2020. So that would be a huge upgrade for the SE watch, especially if it sticks to that same price point, which German says it could take the price point of the Series 3, since that, of course, is no longer being sold by Apple. And then for the Series 8, as you just heard, the chipset inside is looking like it's going to be the same as the Series 7. And if you remember, the Series 7 also had the same chip as the Series 6. So basically, Apple hasn't upgraded the chipset inside of the Apple Watch, the flagship Apple Watch, in two years. And that's pretty strange and kind of makes me already begin to think that the Apple Watch SE is going to be the best value of the bunch. And then let's talk about the next HomePod as well, which funny enough, this report came out right after I tweeted about wanting a new HomePod soon. So this same report says that a new regular sized HomePod is coming in the first half of 2023. So it says this, the HomePod codenamed B620 will run the same S8 chip coming to the watches and will be closer to the original HomePod in terms of size and audio performance rather than a new HomePod mini. The new HomePod will have an updated display on top and there's even been some talk of multi-touch functionality. So not only are we getting a new big HomePod, but it's also going to have a display up top. That is going to be so much better. It's probably going to be cheaper as well than the original HomePod. Even with inflation and everything, I cannot imagine that going for another you know, 300 plus bucks. So I think it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be so much better. So I cannot wait for this new HomePod, especially if we can like do things and run shortcuts from that display on top. I think that'll be awesome. Now we're also hearing that a new Apple TV is on the way. So it says this, the new Apple TV codenamed J255 is in development with an A14 chip and an additional gigabyte of RAM. That compares to the A12 chip announced as part of the 2021 Apple TV last year and could be useful for additional gaming capabilities rolling out in tvOS 16. Now I would expect basically an identical design for this new Apple TV. But what I think everybody is more excited for is that cheaper Apple TV stick to compete with Roku and Chromecast. Now, we don't know if that's coming this fall or you know if it's coming next year, but we should get the answers pretty soon if both are coming this fall. Now, let's move on to a pretty interesting patent that Apple just recently filed, and that is for an advanced ultrasonic touch sensor for the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that the higher end AirPods would be able to perform better while wet 
or while wearing gloves. So according to Patently Apple, ultrasonic touch sensing systems can be less affected when conductive, electrically floating liquids like water droplets or insulated objects like gloved fingers come into contact with its touch sensitive surface. And you could read the article, I will have it linked down in the description below, but it does get pretty technical, but this sounds awesome. And it sounds like something that will take the AirPods to the next level, but we're still likely at least a couple years away from this. I would not expect to see these sensors on the new AirPods Pro 2 coming later this year, but it should get you hyped for the future of AirPods and what they can do. And then let's talk about how Apple failed. More specifically, how they failed to develop their own 5G modem after working on it for the past several years. So here's what Ming-Chi Kuo recently had to say. My latest survey indicates that Apple's own iPhone 5G modem chip development may have failed. So Qualcomm will remain the exclusive supplier for the 5G chips in 2023 iPhones with a 100% supply share versus a previous estimate of 20%. He continues by saying, I believe Apple will continue to develop its own 5G chips, but by the time Apple succeeds and can replace Qualcomm, Qualcomm's other new businesses should have grown enough to significantly offset the negative impacts caused by the order loss of iPhone 5G chips. So basically Qualcomm will now supply 100% of the chips for the 2023 iPhone models rather than just 20% like expected. But Quo does expect Apple to continue working on its own 5G chips so that they can cut out Qualcomm completely. But now it looks like that won't be happening until 2024 at the very earliest. And then speaking of the upcoming iPhones, the demand for the iPhone 14 is already through the roof for China, according to Quo. He said this, the demand for iPhone 14 in the Chinese market may be stronger than that of the iPhone 13. My latest survey indicates that some Chinese distributors, retailers, and scalpers have to pay the highest prepaid deposit ever for iPhone 14 to ensure a sufficient supply implying the iPhone 14 demand in the Chinese market will likely be higher than expected. At present, the iPhone 14 prepaid deposit is significantly higher than the iPhone 13 and even twice as high in some areas. The iPhone 14 shipment forecast of component suppliers and EMS is about 100 million and 90 million units in the second half of 2022, respectively. And in Japan, Apple just raised the prices of iPhones by almost 20%. We're talking about current iPhones. So this is likely due to the weaker currency against the dollar, but it's also indicative of higher priced iPhone 14s to come. So there you have it, guys. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some additional new features and changes found in iPhone iOS 16 beta 2. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 16 and Apple weekly coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.